Is your PC sluggish? Do you struggle to reload your 30 open Chrome tabs after a restart? Or does it freeze up whenever you boot up Photoshop? It could be that your PC is crying out for more RAM, random access memory. That's what your PC uses to juggle large chunks of data on the fly. You may think that tinkering around with the hardware inside your PC is a difficult task, but good news, installing the RAM is about as easy as it gets. So, whether you're upgrading your existing PC or building one for the first time, I'm going to show you exactly how to install your new memory modules. And hopefully neither of us will end up blowing something up. I'm Andy, and I've built more PCs than most people have had hot dinners. Okay, maybe not. But I've been fiddling around with PC hardware for the past 25 years. And in that time, I've learned a thing or two about putting together an impressive gaming rig. Step one, preparation. First off, let me introduce you to your motherboard. This slab of printed silicon is what everything else in your PC plugs into. They come in many sizes, but the one in this PC is a standard ATX model, the most common size. You'll see one very similar to this screwed into the case of most desktop PCs. Before you start messing around with any sensitive components, make sure to turn your PC off at the power socket first, or use the switch on the back of the power supply. We don't want any power going to our machine while we're fiddling around. It's worth pressing the power button once when the PC is unplugged, just to make sure there's no residual charge. Now let's discuss the RAM itself and what type you need to buy. It's vital you check your motherboard and CPU specs before you purchase your RAM. You're looking for what generation of RAM your motherboard and CPU support. Generally, it'll be DDR4 RAM if it's an older motherboard, or DDR5 if it's newer. You also need to know what speed of RAM your motherboard supports. As a very general rule, the faster the clock speed, generally the better the performance. But not all motherboards or chips support or need the fastest speeds. So make sure you double check the spec sheet for your particular motherboard and chip combo before you buy. This is an AM5 motherboard, which means it needs DDR5 RAM. Currently, 6000 MHz DDR5 is considered the sweet spot for performance with an AM5 chip, so that's exactly what I've bought. If you need help picking one manufacturer from another, don't forget PCGamer.com has plenty of reviews of the latest models to help you out. So now we have our motherboard and two sticks of supported RAM. Next stop, installing the RAM itself. Step two, installation. The RAM slots on most desktop motherboards will be right next to the CPU socket, and ours are located here. As you can see, this particular motherboard has four slots. We're gonna be installing a dual channel RAM kit today, so it's important to check your motherboard's documentation to see exactly which slots to use for dual channel operation. In our case, the slots we want to install in are slots two and four. Either side, you'll notice these little plastic clips, and these are the things that'll hold our RAM in place. If you hold one of your new RAM modules up, you'll notice there's a notch around about halfway down. And if you look inside the socket, you'll see that there's a corresponding raised section inside the slot. So to install our RAM, we simply line up the notch with the raised section and gently push down. As you can see, if the RAM is oriented correctly, a little bit of pressure will cause the clips to lock into place on either side. Once the RAM is installed, it's a good idea to check these clips are locked into place, like so. Let's do that again with the second stick. Line up. Gently push down. And make sure both of the clips are locked in place. The biggest piece of advice I can give here is this. Don't force anything. If you're applying a reasonable amount of pressure, the RAM stick should easily lock into place. If you're pushing down and you feel major resistance, pull the stick back out and check that you've got it oriented in the right direction. Removing the modules is just as simple. Press down on the plastic clips either side and out comes your shiny stick of RAM, all in one piece. Simple as that, really. Step three, booting up. Now your RAM is installed, all that's left is to boot up your PC and check whether your new memory is running at the correct speeds. You can do this in your motherboard's BIOS, but to keep things simple, we're gonna use a free Windows-based tool called CPU-Z, linked in the description below. Once you're running CPU-Z, navigate to the Memory tab and check the DRAM frequency. Remember that modern RAM is DDR, or double data rate, so what we're looking for here is a frequency that is half the correct speed of our RAM. In our case, this RAM is supposed to be running at 6,000 megahertz, and CPU-Z is reporting roughly 3,000 megahertz as its DRAM frequency. Perfect. If your RAM is running up far below the speeds it should be, double check that you bought the correct type for your motherboard and whether it uses XMP or EXPO profiles. If it does, you may need to go into your BIOS settings and enable these profiles manually to get the advertised speed. Every motherboard manufacturer has a different BIOS layout, 
So it's best to consult the manual or an online guide to find out exactly where the setting is located on your particular board. Once you've found it, it should be a simple matter of enabling a supported XMP or EXPO profile to get the rated performance out of your new RAM. If you need further help, we've got our very own PC Gamer Guide to RAM Profiles linked in the description below. And there you have it. Other than some software checks at the end to make sure your new RAM is running at the top speed your machine is capable of, installing RAM really is one of the simplest parts of assembling a PC. So don't be afraid to give it a go for yourself. Building or upgrading a PC can feel like an intimidating process, but with a little help from us, we can make sure you install all your components correctly, and you can get down to the business of enjoying some games on your shiny new rig. My name's Andy, and if you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like down below and subscribe to PC Gamer for more hardware how-to videos, top tips, and more.